So now I'm going to walk you through some cool features in the game. First of all, you see at the top, help, it's got a question mark. You open that up and it explains all the things I'm explaining in a text format. The first thing to do is set up your keyboard. You have your sound output device, it should detect that automatically. Your MIDI input device is your keyboard or piano. When you first install this, it'll just detect the one that you've installed. And then it gives you a keyboard size test. You take the farthest left key and the farthest right key. You could also decide a different size uh, keyboard like an F to F key, or you can decide even for a one octave key, right? Keyboard. And it will tell you what you selected down here. And then over here, I want to match that. I've got a four octave keyboard here. I've got three octave keyboard here. Let's match those so it's a one-to-one -one correspondence between what I see here and what I see on the screen. Usually you set this up once and you're done. Songs are organized according to the album. And this album is the Academy Music One. And you see the score on the right-hand side of the highest score for that song in my profile. Each of your kids can have a different score. And then down below, I've got what's called My Songs. This is where you would put your bonus hymns. All right, so that's the songs menu. And all you do is you pick the song and either go straight to play or move to tracks. And here you see the first track is set to play. And the second track is set to play. And here's the range of those two tracks. You can choose any track in the Premiere mode, and you can also choose from 128 different instruments. So I've got here orchestral harp, right? Or I could change that to another, you know, violin sound. MIDI files are organized by tracks. Think of them as the different parts of an orchestra. These are all really the background, but they can also be played. You can also mute them. Some people find the background distracting, so you might just want to mute everything else. So the tracks menu lets you choose which track, what sound, and lets you see the range of those tracks. And then the worlds screen. We've got a number of worlds, and then you've got a total of four game objects to choose from. And I'm going to show you the long game objects here in the notes world. So you're going to see instead of a, a you've got notation, but you've got a long note here, right? So it'll show me the longer I hold it down, and we call this legato, right? Legato meaning an Italian word meaning tied together. So you tie the one note to the next note. So now we go to the option screen. One of the things you always want to check is that the manual song tempo is checked because this allows you to use the left or right arrow keys on your computer. You can speed it up. If they're a little bit too challenged, you can slow it down and you can do that dynamically during the game without having to stop and go here. I also have a check here for the freeze menu. The freeze menu lets you pause the game and put in fingerings or make other adjustments in the game. And it's something that should be checked. So I usually have both manual and freeze menu checked by default. When you hit escape is how you access the freeze menu. If it's not enabled, then it'll just exit the song. Uh, note stretching is a very interesting thing here. Let me just take the note stretching off and watch how long they are. So these. It seems to be moving slower. It's exactly the same tempo as before. But this is without any note stretching. When I go back into options and I click on note stretching, I've got it at about two and a half. That's kind of my sweet spot. Now look at these same notes, same song, no change in tempo. But they seem to be moving a little faster, right? Because the more of the note has to move across the screen in the same amount of time. So it's been stretched two and a half times. Now, the real value of this is when you have, well, let's say the circus song. So I'm going to take off the note stretching, and we're going to see the circus song. And you see the, how, how, how many of these are clustered together? That all looks like one game object. They're all clustered together. And if I go forward, this song gets, goes into a chromatic scale. Look how close these are together. So watch what happens when I go into that and I enable note stretching. And I'm actually going to enable note stretching, say, up to four times. That's about the maximum I use. Now I go back to that same song. See the distance between those three? And when I scroll forward to see that, that section with the chromatic uh, portion, Look how much distance is between these. There's another feature in here that we call looping. 
So if mm -hmm. you just want this song to loop over and over, it'll loop. So let's say this chromatic passage right here was where I was having all my difficulties. I can go in here and I can install a start and an end. And now when I play, it will just play that chromatic passage over and over and over. Okay? You combine it with the note stretching and the song looping and the, the tempo gives the ability to focus only on difficult passages. In the actual game here, there is a yellow line in the middle. But what you don't see is that there's also a green line at the bottom and a red line at the top. And so this is the precision part of the game. So if it passes the red line, they've missed. So this challenge can be adjusted in two ways. It's the up and down arrows. And down here, we usually leave it open in the beginning so the kids have success. In the options menu, we have note stretching. There's a slider bar. I usually set mine at about two and a half. Freeze menu, I suggest you always have it on because you can hit escape and I have access now to the scroll bar. Let me show you the fingerings on the visual screen. If I enable fingerings right there, then in that freeze menu, I can change the fingerings. So this has three, one, three. So I'm supposed to do three, one, three, right? Well, maybe I think that's really silly. And I just want to do three, three, three. So I change that. Up pops a hand. I change that one to three and three, three, three. And whether I have ladybugs or musical notes or turtles, it'll show me that fingering when I have fingering enabled. But you have the ability to change those, but also add to a MIDI file that you download, add your own fingerings. And for piano teachers, you may disagree with these fingerings, and then you can change those. Parents may just find that the, the, the child's hand is not large enough, and they want to adapt that. So this is a great feature. And again, it's accessible in what we call the freeze menu. And then song looping lets you go in and do phrase looping like we showed you with that chromatic sequence. Now let's go to audio screen. So in audio, I've got my sound effects volume. This is really just the applause at this point. And I've got my lead volume, which is the, vo the part I'm playing. And then whatever else is in the background, I've got that volume. And then audible metronome. Because of the visual nature of this game, most people really don't need an audible metronome to really be precise. But if you just want that, that audio reference and, and, it, and it's helpful, it's there for you. Now we're gonna move on to the visual screen. You can add and subtract elements visually. If I play this now, right, there's no background, there's no points of reference here, but for some kids the colors may be overwhelming, but if they want to add guidelines, right, that would help them, right? Now they can see exactly which note it's going to. If they wanted to add the note labels, they just wanted to learn the names of the notes, and they, they right, they can add that and then the beat lines. So this screen we see is a little bit too complex, but again, I can go back and I can take away the beat lines, which add a lot of complexity, leave the guidelines in, take away the fingerings, and you know, simplify this. I can go to levels two, three, and four, right? And as I've said before, when I'm on level three, I usually don't want the guidelines because it complicates things. So I have lots of options here. And you'll see a little representation down here that uh, shows you what, what's enabled, what's not enabled. But the next screen is really the challenges screen. And we've got a couple of challenges in here. One is the visibility challenge. You see these translucent bubbles? As I do better and better, which I'm not gonna do better and better on, on the circus song, I get more and more bubbles, right? until this actually will obscure this totally. The idea of the, the challenge screen is to make me memorize, make me play this more by ear. Or I can do the color dropout, and this is a great way to transition someone from level three to level four. This is a way to wean you off of the color coding as well. But as I do better and better, I'm gonna start seeing some notes that are missing their color, you see that? It's on the same line, right? but the color is starting to drop out gradually. They're very useful in terms of the kids kind of mastered the song, but they're not quite ready to play without the game. And getting them to memorize and getting them to get off the colors is, we've made it into another portion of the game. And that's what the challenges are. And we'll be adding more and more challenges. So you, well, you'll want to check the updates uh, button here. 
So we've gone through all these things, but right now I'd like to show you one of the most powerful and exciting features of this game is the ability to import MIDI files. MIDI, M-I-D-I. -I. Think of them as the DNA of music. And what the wonderful aspect of our game is, is that we take that DNA and we make it into a game. And then we change the game sideways. Then we change the color-coded notes and then, color and then black notes with fingering, without fingering, with note names. We, we take that DNA and we give you multiple views of it. So how do we get that into the game? When you install it, you're going to see that there is a file under your uh, user called music. You open that up, you might have iTunes, but there's now also a file called Piano Wizard. And that folder, when I open it up, has a folder called My Songs. Any MIDI files that you put into the My Songs folder can be seen and played in the game. So for example, I went and downloaded some pieces by Bach, and I'm going to put that in the My Songs folder. Boom. You will now see them in the game, and let's just see how that is. And remember, I can click through these very quickly with just the space bar. And I go back into Premiere Mode. I cannot see new songs in Easy Mode, but in Premiere Mode, so I'm going to scroll down here, and you see the album here? I'm going to scroll down to the My Songs album, and in the My Songs album, what was, one of them was called Invention Number Two. There it is. I'll go to Tracks menu, and it's left and right hand. I've got the right hand default, and let's see what that looks like. Let me, what world am I in? Uh, let me go to Ladybugs, my favorite, and level one. Very quickly, everything's there. Put in some guidelines, and let's see what this looks like. Nope, oh, that's going too fast. Let me start over. So I'm going to slow that down. This is a file that I just got off the internet. Here's a little trill. And I'm playing, right? And I can go in and I can modify this. I can add fingerings to this. So I'm going to go back here and enable fingerings view. And this has no fingerings. I just downloaded off the internet. There's nothing in there. There's no. See, there's no fingerings on any of these, but I can go back and I'll say, you know what, on the right hand, I'm going to go two, one, two, three, four. And I just click on it and put in a fingering. How cool is that? This is a file I just downloaded off the internet and now I'm customizing it to my hand and my needs. That's the power of the Piano Wizard Academy, is that you can download your own music, pick out your own parts of that music, learn them at your own pace, slow it down, speed it up, you know, zoom in, uh, go in, zooming in on a phrase, go stretch the notes out, put in fingerings, put in note names, change the, the, the views, notation view, or, or you know, space view, whatever you want. That flexibility was built into the game from the get-go because we all love music, but we all love different music. And we want you to be able to play the music in your heart. And that's our gift to you.